Father and Son. Father and Son. Father and Son, oh Father and Son, review it all. Father and Son, review it all. Are you ready for a movie review? Movie review. All right. Where's the drink? Here's the popcorn. And here's the drink. Regal Cinemas, we just went. And what did we see? We saw Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. Um, mm -hmm. The sequel to my favorite movie of all time, The Shining. Um, I think it's interesting to note that this movie was actually about The Shining. The Shining really wasn't about The Shining. Yeah. But this one was. This so one they was called it Dr. Sleep. And you find out when you see the movie why they call it Dr. Sleep. So, first off, let's just start with the thumbs up, thumbs down for the people that don't want to hear everything we got to say. This will be spoilers. There is spoilers. He gives a thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yeah. I'm going to give it like this and this. Okay? So, there you go. Some movie review. See you later. <laughs> go ahead. Talk but, about it. Well... This might just be very nostalgia fueled, if you can nostalgia even say that. Fueled, okay. But I really liked this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't even know how to explain it. And during one part, one specific part of the movie, I felt something that I've only felt a few times before, as far as levels of excitement go. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think this might be the first or at least one of the few times a movie has made me feel that excited. Really? Um. I felt something too. I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I felt that too, but <laughs> the excitement took precedence over that. Alright. Um. So yes, this is a sequel to The Shining. It follows Danny Torrance, um, the main, well, pretty much the main character of The Shining, other than... His two well, parents. Well, yeah, one of three, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it's basically him later in life and... Problems he's had. Problems he's had, such as taking after his father. Oh, yeah, he did. Um. Got in some fights, too, didn't he? Yeah. He was rough. And the ending of this movie. One thing I find very interesting about it is, since the... The Shining ended differently from the book, the original book of The Shining. Um, at the end of the book, um, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Scatman Crothers' character. Mm -hmm. At the end of the book, Scatman... Oh, Halloran? Yeah, Dick Halloran. At the end of the book, Dick Halloran is still alive and the Overlook gets blown up because the boiler isn't checked out checked after uh, for too long an amount of time. Um, Jack still dies in that one, but he dies in the explosion. Mm. Um, since in the book, Dick Halloran, I mean in the original movie, The Shining, Dick Halloran die, uh, yeah, Dick Halloran dies, and the way that the hotel gets abandoned is that it just freezes over, essentially. Okay. And gets left to ruin. But, in this movie, they took the ending of the book, uh, of the original book, essentially, and plastered it onto this. And I thought that flowed very well and thought it was very interesting to watch go down. Did you like the book better than the movie for The Shining? Um, I thought they were both, I thought they both had their, they were both very, very good. All right. Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't read the book of The Shining, but mm -hmm. I've seen the movie, and I enjoyed the movie of The Shining. I could sit and watch that over and over again. Mm -hmm. The problem that I have in relation to this being a sequel is there's a certain level when you're watching movies. I like the more suspenseful things where they don't really show you as much. You know, something's taking people over, and, you know, it doesn't come right out and show you. I think that Dr. Sleep ran the gamut of that. Some of it was, I think they went too far, 
showing you too much and when they could have pulled back and not showed you as much. And then some of it was brilliantly done, I thought. What, what I would like to see, more of the suspenseful type of things where you get to piece a few things together for yourself. So this movie for me really had some just amazing moments in it and then some that I was like, Ugh. then there was a couple of goofy scenes in there too, which I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But overall, you're going to see that, I think, in a lot of movies. But I really didn't like, what were the name of those characters, the the, the bad people, I guess, the ones stealing the, um, the souls or whatever they were doing? Yeah, stealing the smoke. I um, didn't like them. Not from a, I just think that they were kind of overblown and stupid. I mean, they never really tell you where they came from. They were just kind of there. I didn't really feel anything for them. Now, I read a review where a reviewer had said that their motivations were made perfectly clear, and you almost, like, can sympathize with them. And I'm like... I couldn't sympathize with them. But I never I, sympathized with them. I get what them. they were trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I know do. what they were trying to do. I know exactly what they're trying to do, but I didn't sympathize with them. I wasn't rooting for them anyway. I kind way, of understand how someone could sympathize with them. They were a bunch of weirdos. I didn't. They were stealing people's souls or whatever. They, they were, were trying to live forever. Yeah. And that's well, not it. even and they forever, were, just long. And they felt that they were justified in doing whatever they had to do to do it. And, you know, whatever. I didn't feel Especially anything Especially because them. they had the ability to. Yeah, they could. And it was, a lot it was of power left unchecked, well, until they meet somebody who yeah. can kind of give them a run for their money. Um, but I think that aspect of the movie kind of fell short for me. I think if I was able to go through there and edit it, it would have been better for me. So I suppose with all this stuff that people have on their computers, we probably could go through and edit it. Probably. You know? But anyway, I thought overall it was excellent. It was, it was entertaining. It was really difficult for me to see this as like a sequel to The Shining. I can see it as you a know? sequel. I, it was difficult for me to do that. Because, again, The Shining didn't necessarily... Just give you everything. Yeah. You know, there was more suggestions and, you know, watching the movie in relation to the book, I didn't read it, obviously, I almost thought it was more like, okay, maybe these things were happening in The Shining, in the movie, but maybe he, it's more in his head, he's conjuring it up, or whatever is at play is just making him see these things, he's imagining this stuff is there, versus it's really there. So that's the way I read the movie. Ever since the first time I saw the movie, I always saw it as an imprint left on the hotel. Okay, well, that's another way you can look at it, too. But like I said, from the way I viewed it, okay, well, it's the same thing. It's still, you know, it's something's imprinted in him, you know, that he's seeing these things or whatever. But this movie, it kind of, there's a line that you cross, and they kind of crossed it with, some of it got a little hokey here and there, some of it you really could telegraph, you could see, oh, well, this is coming here. I knew his partner there was going to get killed. You knew that was going to happen. Yeah. As soon as he went with him on that mission. I, I, mean, I did I like... Uh, what? I actually didn't see that coming. Oh, I did. I knew that. As soon as he went with him on the trip, I said, he ain't coming back. I knew that was going to happen. And then I one thing I didn't expect was the uh, little Danny Torrance OK uh, gunfight at the OK Corral, where they went crazy in the woods shooting. Yeah. That was... I liked that. That was great. What a great scene that was. One, one part of that scene that... <laughs> I find a little uh, hokey. How that man was very quick to shooting himself with a sniper rifle. I feel like that would be a lot more awkward and take a bit more time to set up. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, what I don't understand though is what took him so long because he snuck around the trailer. Danny yeah. Torrance, he gets he's on the ground. Danny Torrance Hon is on the ground. Honestly, and during that scene, I was expecting her, uh, the one that could it, essentially tell you what to do yeah i was expecting her to be standing over danny as he's on the ground and then just see the whoa. well that was the weird thing though there's a scene where this girl she can has she has mind powers and she yeah. can make you do things yeah and she's making dan she's not he's on the ground and she's making him fall asleep and he's just gonna stand over him but just before that happened danny and his partner walked towards the vehicle and and his partner had more than enough time to have taken her yeah. out. The scene took too long to play out. It should have been quicker. I mean... And they, they got a little too... It he, was too long with that He could have scene. gotten a shot off a he lot earlier. He could have. They only knew they were looking for one person. So as soon as she stepped out, he could have taken her out. Yeah. So that was kind of... I don't know. It was kind of sad. And then there's another scene where Danny Torrance is at one of his AA meetings. And he passes out. And when he comes to, like... 
his buddy is helping him come too, you know, but nobody else cares. They're all just kind of like standing around and talking to each other in the corners. And it's like, no, some guy just passed out. Most, I think everybody in the room is going to walk over and see what's wrong with him. That was kind know. of a weird scene. You have to remember there's a doctor there, so maybe. Yeah, but the doctor wasn't doing anything. His friend pulled him up off the ground. His friend was talking to him. Nobody else came over. Everyone was, like, oblivious to it. They're like, oh, yeah. I... Do they just expect this at AA meetings? Well, <laughs> People drop on the floor all the time with blood coming out of their nose? It was kind of a dumb scene, but they could have played it a little better. Even if they just had a few people standing around him, just say, oh, are you all right? Whatever. But, you know, it was kind of weird. But overall... The movie was good. There was definitely some high points in there. There was a lot. There was some decent suspense going on. Um, I think it could have been. There's. I give it maybe a. I don't know. A B. What are you gonna give it? An A plus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see why you would. I mean, you're a huge fan of the stuff. Yeah. It's just. It's. It's hard for me to segue from The Shining to this. They don't really. Matt, it's an offshoot of that. It's not like it, you know, it's supposed to be a direct sequel, but it's really, I don't know, the way some of the stuff happens, it's not quite in line with the way things happen in the other. And what I mean as far as the staging of it, the way things play out. I also think they could have done a lot better with body doubles for Jack Nicholson oh, and, yeah. and Shelley no, Duvall. That's one of the main problems I, was like, I had. That was that was a re- I mean there's there's so many people that do fantastic impressions of these yeah. actors, actresses, whatever. They could have done better. I mean it's obvious who they were supposed to be, but I'm yeah. kind of like really that's the best you could get. Could have gone to YouTube and found a ton of people that could have really seriously. Yeah, you could have. There's tons of them out there. Um Yeah, that that I did have a little bit of trouble with. I think Danny looked the best out of all of them, and he still it didn't even he look He didn't right. look like him, but, yeah. Mr. Grady actually probably looked the best out of all the... And the Dick Halloran guy, he sounded like him, and you he could... He sounded like he him. He knew who he was supposed and, to be, but Scatman Crothers, you're not. Yeah, no. he sounded like him, and some of his facial, not features, but expressions he gave... Yeah, he did a pretty good job impersonating him, but him. The other, The other three were a little wonky. The other few main ones, at least. Yeah, they were a little wonky I'm looking. surprised we didn't see that dog man in the... I was waiting for him. That's what I wanted to see, the dog man. That would have been great. Is that a dog or it's a, a bear? Dog. Or a dog? It's a dog. Whatever it is. Animal man. So anyway, I don't know. We're just going to ramble at this point. There's a yeah. ton more we could say. But oh, yeah. he loved it. I thought it was great. I really did think it's, it, it's worth checking out. There's some, like I said, I had some problems with the flow of how it goes from one movie to the next. But with some creative editing in my own head, I could piece together a decent movie for myself. But uh, overall, it was good. It was it was really good. So, but I mean, it's basically just a movie talking about how the shine can evolve and what different yes. forms it can take. It was about and the shining. Then a resolution to mm-hmm. the shining, the movie. Yeah. So it was definitely about shining. Sometimes they just shine. Sometimes they don't come back. Right. Yeah. Sometimes they just change. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah. Some of you viewers out there might know what I'm talking about. And maybe someday I'll share that story with y'alls. So, for Father and Son Review It All, I am Big Torrance. And I am Little Torrance. Torrance. And remember, have, have good, good YouTube. YouTube.